Hi, today I've got this Steel Cloud IDS 3000. Uh, this is made by Computer Associates and it's um, an intrusion detection system which is basically there to look for any hacking attempts in a building. You know, you'd put it at your uh, main office or whatever and have it checking to make sure your system is all safe and no one's getting into it. Uh, it's in a pretty standard 1U rack. Uh, it's actually nice um, metal enclosure and everything. Very fancy looking. And we've got a, a LCD with a control pad and I can tell from the design of this that this is a crystal fonts model. And uh, yeah, so we'll uh, flip it around. And there's also the big E-Trust logo on the top for some whatever reason. Round back, uh, I don't have the lid on properly, but round back we've got a power connector two uh, 40 millimeter fans, uh, what looks to be a standard computer motherboard. You've got um, PS2 ports, serial VGA, uh, printer, two Ethernet ports. Now, normally there are Ethernet ports and then USB underneath it, but I can feel that there's no USB, so this is being blocked by the case. And what they call the Rapid Exchange Module, which had this little cover over it when I got it. And which is just it was held in place by security bits, so uh, I didn't bother putting those back. And what's inside this? It sounds really impressive, but it's just a CF card that says Rapid Exchange Module on it. Now I have checked this out in my computer. It says it's unformatted. The uh, drive itself either shows up as generic or as a T. Uh, I think it's a Toshiba. It shows up as. So I'm curious to see if there's actually anything special about this or if it's just looking for the fact that you have a CF card installed because from what I can tell there's no data on it. So well, what is it doing? How is this like some kind of fancy module? It looks like it's just a CF card. Yeah, that is just a standard Toshiba CF card. There's nothing special about that. It's possible it does have some kind of data on it. But seriously, how much does this thing cost and what are they, you know, like, what are they charging for this? Is this a paid upgrade or is this being used as a cash? If so, I don't know what it's helping with because this system has dual um, 80 gig, 7200 RPM drives in it. So how the hell is this helping? Like a little, let's, I think it's like 128 meg uh, CF card. Yeah, you could put stuff on here for... Um, uh, stuff that's randomly accessed, really small files, but realistically, what is this doing? Uh, so my my thought is that this is some kind of paid upgrade from them, and they're just gouging people for a three dollar CF card. <laughs> With the top off, we can see just how this thing's set up. They have this kind of unusual arrangement where the uh, power supply is moved forward, and the fans at the back, which would normally be uh, the power supply fans are actually just separate 40 millimeter fans that are just blowing air over the CPU, which has just a standard cooler on it, nothing too special. Uh, there's two memory sticks installed. I think they are one, tw oh no, they're 512 meg, so it's got one gig total. The motherboard is an Intel server board, which oddly enough comes with an AGP port, which is bizarre. I don't know why that's on a server board. But there's a standard parallel ATA uh, cable with this stupid rubber crap on it uh, running to a CF card reader. And a bunch more 40 millimeter fans. We have a Seagate hard drive. There's actually two that's normally installed. I took one out already. Uh, they're mirrored. Uh, so if one of them fails, you could just pop in a new one and it would rebuild itself from the second drive. But yeah, they're just standard 80 millim um, sorry, 80 gig. 7200 RPM, serial ATA, nothing too special there. And we've just got um, a, ser a serial cable running to the front for the uh, LCD. One thing that no I noticed about this case is the airflow. Like, we've got these big fans, and we've got a couple more down there. And obviously the airflow is to pull everything in from the front and out the back, like it should be. But there just isn't... A lot of venting most of the venting is along the side which in some rack mount 
cases may not get very much airflow. Uh, there is a little bit of venting along the edges of this on the bottom, but that could be blocked by the unit below it. Uh, so I, I don't know how efficient this thing is. I mean, it, it, I could easily see most of its vents being plugged up and it just doing nothing. So, eh, I'm not convinced. I mean, it doesn't really make that much heat. But then again, why do you have all the fans then if it doesn't make much heat? There's a little bit of foam here to plug up the hole for the uh, serial ATA cables. Presumably to keep the airflow right. So it's not just pulling air in from here and just circulating. But yeah, it, I'm not convinced of its the, the airflow design. Like I think the case could use some work. Like the, if they put lots of vents here, I think that would work a lot better. If you're dealing with something that you're you're obviously trying to get high airflow, if you've got four 40 millimeter fans plus two more plus the one the two inside the power supply, a couple odd things about this case. I'm just taking it apart. Uh, one is the fans at the back only have two screws, and they've actually only cut out two holes, which is a little weird. I mean, usually you use all four mounting screws. I don't actually know if I've seen that before. Uh, these are kind of standard um, 40 millimeter ABC fans. They're pretty loud. The whole system is very loud, mostly due to this power supply, which is an Emacs model. I've seen this one before. It's always loud. It's got two fans in it, and they just, they're so damn loud. But uh, you can see this is the little air duct that they use, and with the fans here, it pulls air out causing a nice little uh, breeze over the CPU to just kind of get rid of that hot air. And that just came out no problem. You can see the mains plug comes in through a filter, nicely um, heat shrunk and everything. There's a grounding wire that connects to the chassis and it just converts to an IEC plug which plugs into the back of the power supply which seems so convoluted. Does this chip really make that much heat? I don't think so. So, I know it's a Pentium 4 because I found an article that says this thing is being introduced, this is around 2003, it is being introduced at just under $20,000 for this thing. Uh, and it's a 533 megahertz front side bus, no sorry, this one is an 800 megahertz front side bus Pentium 4, uh, which makes me wonder why it's ECC memory because Pentium 4s don't support ECC memory as far as I know. Um, yeah, so it was a very expensive system. This thing came with Windows 2003 server on it and it does actually boot. Everything seems to work. Uh, I don't have a login for it and I cannot reset that password. I've used all sorts of free tools to clear the password. It always says, oh, I've cleared the password. Still can't log in. Either way, I checked the drive. There's nothing on it, really. I mean, it's basically just a Windows install. Uh, it claims to use their fancy antivirus software, so I'm sure it's on there somewhere, but I didn't really look around for it. At the front, there's a whole bunch of fan connectors. I've actually disconnected almost every single fan just because the thing doesn't make that much heat, and it made a ton of noise. So I was just went around disconnecting all the fans while I was working on it. The really funny thing is, is they have these hooked up to the Crystal Fonts display, but they don't have it monitoring the fans. I had them all disconnected and it didn't care. It never told me, hey, the fans aren't spinning. As far as I know, the Crystal Fonts displays can do that. They have a microcontroller and can um, uh, report that kind of stuff back. They have like GPIO ports as well, which is how it uh, powers on the system. But I don't know why they have it doing the fans if they don't actually have it checking. Uh, there's also a couple fans plugged into the motherboard, and there's just fans everywhere else. But on the plus side, you've got this nice wiring bundle that's been um, wire tied. Uh, one weird thing is that everything in the case seems to be a Phillips number one. Almost every computer I've ever used uses Phillips number two screws, so I don't know why they have Phillips number one. Even the motherboard screws. So that's weird. But uh, I'm going to take the power supply out and this crossbar and all the fans and stuff and we'll get a little deeper and take a look at the motherboard.
Here's a CF card adapter. It's just a standard parallel ATA adapter. It has space for the little um, two and a half inch hard drive style connector, but they're not using it. It's got a little metal bracket and this piece which goes on the back. Uh, this is designed to fill in the back of the case because the space on the case is actually designed for like a PCI card. So this just fills in the gap. It's got little nylon screws holding this metal bracket to it and it's nothing special. These are passive adapters. They don't really do anything. And here's the LCD on the front. Very filthy buttons. Um, yeah, not much to say about this one. It is a crystal font. It's probably a 633. Yep, 633. These are pretty standard on one U cases. They're very, very nice. Uh, I bent it a little when I was taking it out. Uh, it's got fan connectors. It can control the fans. It can control your motherboard with this funky cable. Which, what, Leo? Anyway, cats, what are you going to do? Um, it can control the motherboard with these uh, header pins. Ground, power, and 5 volt and whatnot. So uh, reset. So the microcontroller on this can reset the board if it freezes with a watchdog timer, that kind of stuff. So it's a pretty useful thing. Um, they, these can be custom programmed, so there's a chance that it won't work with their software. But without a case that can take it, it's not really all that useful. So I'm probably just going to chuck this one. I have a bunch of them anyway. Here's one of the two standard Seagate. Barracuda 7200 RPM drives, it's 80 gigs, serial ATA, it came in a little bracket, nothing too special, this is actually quite filthy, throw that away. Uh, the drive itself is actually failing, it's showing uh, real reallocated sectors, which means it's had trouble reading or writing to parts of the drive, and it's using spare portions of the drive to recover from it. So it's on its way out, but it doesn't matter, people always buy hard drives on eBay no matter how broken they are. I don't know why, they just do. Well, usually it's to get the controller boards to replace a working drive, or fix a working, fix a broken drive, I should say. Uh, here's the motherboard. It's the Intel entry-level server board, and it's a S825WP1-E, and yeah, nothing special. It's certainly no super micro. This particular board has a mix of standard electrolytics and some uh, solid polymer caps. So it's not terrible. This is about when polymer caps started showing up. It's got a big heat sink that's actually very weak. <laughs> Just bend it, no problem. An aluminum heat sink for the, uh, you know, the North Bridge. And a little MC fan made by San Ace, or sorry, uh, by Sanyo Denki, I should say. Uh, good fan. It's not too loud. And unlike my cat, what do you want, Leo? Yeah, okay, whatever. Nothing, I guess. So, you can see that there are USB ports on this thing. They were just hidden by the case. So what I did while it was in the case to test the system was there's a header on here for a USB port. And I just used one of these little adapters, which are very useful. Let's you plug in and gives you a USB port from the header. Now, these are very useful for routers and stuff, like a machine you're using as a router or a server, because you can put this on and then just tuck this in the case and leave a flash drive on it. And you've got a little boot drive and you don't have it sticking out the back of the case. So it's very nice. These are pretty cheap. Um, this particular adapter is like a couple bucks. This one I scored from a case, and I had to use this one because I needed two ports. So this is the exact same thing, just bigger, and it's got a dual way, a two-way connector, and gives you two USB ports. So I let me plug in a USB um, hard drive and a USB keyboard and mouse because, or sorry, a USB mouse, because I have a PS2 keyboard, I don't have a PS2 mouse, so I couldn't use uh, both. Uh, I don't have any of the adapters that let you use a USB um, mouse on the PS2 port, 
The motherboard is actually not terrible. I mean, it's obviously dated. You you don't have any PCI Express, which is the main thing holding it back, and it's a Pentium 4. Ugh. Uh, it has six serial ATA ports. It's got older PA, pure, ugh, parallel ATA ports, a floppy drive port. You know, it's a decent array of stuff. It's just, you know, it's dated. What can I say? Uh, it may be good for a system where you're, uh, you know, to test older hardware, but to be honest, there are better choices from Supermicro. You know, you can pick up another one of these type enterprise things for like 50 bucks and it will have a nice Supermicro motherboard in it. These Intel boards are not that fancy. Uh, there is a couple interesting things on it. Look at this inductor in this cool package. I haven't seen that one before. It's made by Pulse. It's pretty cool. And this thing is a crystal oscillator. It's a, you know, like a 32K clock crystal in this weird little protective package. Very nice attention to detail because, you know, you can't, like, snap it off, right? But... Overall, the board's not terrible. I mean, you've got Nichicon caps, or uh, Nippon Chemicon caps, even though these are... Um, I can't remember if KZE are good or bad. I know the Gs are bad, but eh. Uh, Rubicon up here, so not terrible. Let's get this heat sink off. If I have a slot screwdriver here, I do. Need a bigger one. No, that's not a slot screwdriver. There we go. All right, to pop these off, you just put a slot screwdriver in here. Pop off the little tab, bracket. There you go. Fan power. And this should come out. There we go. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is, but a lot of these older sockets pull the CPU out along with it. It just seems so bad. Hey, guess what? The socket's actually cracked. I don't think this did, uh, pulling this out did it. I think this just has been cracked the whole time. That's pretty bad. Oh well, it's only a Pentium 4, and you can see that there are wire ties here because they had everything wired tied down, and it was very, very nicely done. This bracket is... Oh, it's just push pins. Okay. I was wondering how they were holding this bracket on. So, it's just a standard uh, Ziff socket. It's an LGA... Uh, sorry, uh, MPGA whatever, 478. The Pentium, Pentium 1, whatever that is. Let's see. Off. And we've got a filthy chip I can't read. Pulled the CPU out, it's Pentium 4, 2.8 gigahertz, 800 megahertz front side bus, nothing too special, single core. It's the uh, SL6WJ. And yeah, pretty useless. I don't like Pentium 4s, they use too much power for too little performance. So yeah, not too interesting. Overall, this wasn't a very uh, good system. I mean, the Intel board means it's not quite as good as the Super Micro boards that usually come in servers and, um, you know, enterprise level stuff. Uh, it does have some benefits. It's got a Rage XL uh, video chipset on the board, so you can actually use it as a proper um, computer. But. <clears throat> It's just, you know, the limitation of the Pentium 4, the older socket. Uh, if you could get this really, really cheap, you might be able to get money on the hard drives. But, like I said, mine is uh, dying. Uh, you know, it does have one benefit, which is the board has a lot of serial ATA connectors and a Marvel-based uh, RAID controller. But, to be honest, you can do better. And, you know... It was interesting seeing inside this system, but not too good a buy.